Hey everyone, welcome to KM Reviews. I am Niddleman. Today I have a special guest. It is Robert Meyer Burnett, who you may recognize from Collider or a multitude of other formats. Uh, but for those of you not familiar, um, can you kind of tell everyone a little bit about you and who you are and what you do? Sure. Well, you know, for the last, gosh, 28 years, I, I've been working professionally in Hollywood, sort of working my way up that proverbial ladder, doing uh, anything I can to sort of well, to facilitate my quest to become a filmmaker. Um, I'm most well known, I think, for a movie that I directed, co-wrote, and edited called Free Enterprise. Now it's sort of a lost, obscure cult film, but it stars Eric McCormack from Will and & Grace and William oh, no. Shatner, and it's all about genre fans and, and all things geeky and Star Trek and Star Wars and comic books. And then I spent 15 years making special features for... Um, both DVDs and Blu-rays. I worked on everything from the X-Men movies. I did four uh, special editions for Brian Singer. I worked on, on The Chronicles of Narnia. I worked on movies like Shoot 'Em Up. I spent three and a half years making documentaries for the Star Trek The Next Generation Blu-rays. Nice. Uh, and so, and now I've been editing movies. Um, I'm back to editing movies. I've been a film editor professionally since 93. And I've gone back and forth. I've always jumped back into cutting features. There's a, a low-budget sci-fi thriller, time travel thriller I cut that's on Netflix right now called Paradox, and currently I'm editing and I'm a producer on a low-budget, uh, I like to say it's the Jewish spiritual quest indie dance comedy that you didn't know you needed, but you <laughs> do, and it's called Tango Shalom, and I'm, I'm currently working on that, finishing that up. Okay, well, that's, yeah, so, I mean, shoot, producing, writing, uh, I don't know, it sounds like yeah. you do this huge multitude of things, it's, but it's not, you said you go back to editing a lot. Is that your favorite thing to do, or out of all the things you do, what's your favorite thing to do? Well, I think, you know, they're all different. Editing, I really enjoy editing because you're getting material when it's already shot. Right. So the nightmare and the headache of trying to get in the can what your, your vision is, is not my responsibility. I, I only get to work with the magic that's already been created. Right. So that I, I, it's a lot of editing is, is for me, it's a really a great creative thrill because it's instant creative gratification. As soon as you put two images together or you start cutting a scene together, it becomes amazing. And it's, it's, it is instant gratification. You could spend an afternoon and cut a whole scene and have a whole scene to watch, a scene that didn't exist before it was given to you. Right. And whether I'm editing documentary material or, or feature film material, I, I just really love the science and sort of the, the, the alchemy of editing, which is sort of like spinning. I've always said that filmmaking in general is kind of like what Rumpelstiltskin did by spinning straw into gold. And uh, edit, editing is like that as well. And, and I really enjoy I really enjoy doing it. So when you're editing, do you find uh, you kind of have the sole, I don't know, creative direction with it? Or is it the directors that kind of guide you? We want it to look like this or be paced like this? Or how much creative control do you have over it? Well, what I really like about it is normally an editor starts working usually when a film first starts production. Okay. And for the first weeks, you're working on your own. And, and that's fun, but really you're trying to facilitate the best movie possible, and that is ultimately going to be in the service of the director. Uh, and when you end up working with the director, I, I, there's nothing better than sitting in a room with the director and working with him or her to achieve uh, the vision they had for the film. And what I really like doing, and I think what many directors, when they work with me, have commented on is because I have directed in the past, and I do bring uh, a certain sensibility to my projects, I'm pretty easy to work with, but I really I really enjoy the synthesis of working with the director, and I'm, I'm certainly opinionated, um, most of the time that's usually welcome, but uh, sometimes it's not, and it really depends on who you're working with, but really when you are editing a feature you are there to facilitate the director's uh, viewpoint and his or her vision. And I love doing that. I love, I mean, I love, even if I'm directing or anything, the, the process of collaboration on a movie is, for me, tremendous. I mean, I'm right. a social person anyway, but, <clears throat> you know, the last time I was regularly, regularly directing was for a show, a Cinemax HBO show called Femme Fatales, 
And I really enjoyed working, which I also edited myself. I really enjoyed working with all the different departments. I love working with the director of photography, uh, whether it's it's uh, whether it's a, on an episodic half hour show or on a feature. I mean, it's there's nothing better. And working with all the department heads on a feature film is a, is a joy. I mean, whether it's hair and makeup, whether it's your DP, whether it's the entire uh, art department. Uh, it's so much fun, and I, I love the process. I love all facets of that process. So, filmmaking to me is—it's a dream come true. So, now, what got you involved in all this? What made you? Uh, was there some sort of spark when you were younger that said, "I want to be in the movie industry"? Was there a particular movie? I don't know. What did you go to school? What kind of led you well, to where you are? Yeah, I became obsessed with movies when I was really, really young, and and my first heroes were behind the scenes people. Like I loved the producer George Powell and he had produced the original War of the Worlds and When Worlds Collide and Conquest of Space and uh, Doc Savage Man of Bronze The Time Machine and he was the first producer whose movies I loved I, I when I was five years old my favorite movie in the world was the original War of the Worlds from 1953 and I loved George Powell and I then I discovered people like Ray Harryhausen who did the stop motion animation for things like Jason and the Argonauts and the Sinbad movies and the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, and I just really became fascinated uh, by filmmaking, and what was really interesting is a lot of filmmakers say Star Wars, but when Star Wars came out, what was really interesting was they had a documentary on how Star Wars was made, and uh, blue screen, and, and seeing models, which I love building model spaceships, and it really uh, solidified my desire, so between five and, and ten years of age, I, I knew I wanted to make movies, and then after that, I got a Super 8 uh, a millimeter movie camera where I was actually shooting film, stop motion films, and I'd build spaceship models and blow them up in the backyard. And, nice. And um, and then, as the home video era dawned, uh, I started working in home video when when there were very few people who had VCRs even, and I became a movie fanatic, and I really started studying films and. In high school, I became really serious about it. I wrote a, a film column for my high school newspaper, and uh, I went to international film festivals and, and really wanted to see. I would watch movies from all over the world. Um, and it's strange because loving science fiction, fantasy, and horror movies the way I do, I wanted to see all of them. Right. Like, it, I never went, oh, I'm not going to watch this because it's old. I never understood that because when I was a kid, I was watching movies that were already 30 and 40 years old, 50 years old in the case of the Universal Monster movies, and I never had a bias against something because it was in black and white. Like, I love The Twilight Zone, and The Twilight Zone was in black and white, and I watched it because, to my way of thinking, you wanted to know all about, like, I wanted to see every single movie ever made that had anything to do with science fiction, fantasy, and horror. So if I was watching George Melier's silent movie, A Trip to the Moon, or Fritz Lang's Metropolis from 1927, I mean, I wanted to know where all of these movies came from. And, you know, I wouldn't not watch a movie because it was cheesy or had subpar special effects or something because uh, they didn't have the kind of special effects we had now back in the day, but they were still making movies. Right. Like, why wouldn't you watch them? But now I understand, like, I try and get my little nephews to watch a Godzilla movie, and it's really hard to watch a 1960s <laughs> Godzilla film with men in suits stomping around model cities when you can watch Jurassic Park or Pacific Rim. It's, it's, it's a little rough. Right. <laughs> so, out of all this, so did you ever go to school for any of it, or is it all kind of been... I did. I, I did. I went to a college in Washington State called the Evergreen State College that was a liberal arts school, and then the... You could get your hands on 16 millimeter camera equipment, and I started making movies. Okay. And we had all kinds of filmmaking programs there. We had a, a, a weekly community access television show where people were making. Uh, it was called Cat Community Artists Television. Right. And this is way before YouTube or the internet, and right. we were making a weekly show. And then I went to USC uh, to go to film school. I wanted to get my master's from USC, but I got hired out of a class. These two producers who came to visit were just, they were just guest speakers. I, I had always did preparation before we had guest speakers. So I knew what to ask them. And they called my professor the next day and gave me my first job in the industry. Nice. Mark Levinson and Scott Rosenfeld, they went on, they produced Mystic Pizza, which was Julia Roberts day, debut movie. And then they executive produced Home Alone and Nice. And it was great. And they, they gave me my first job. It was fantastic. 
Um, so out of all those things that you've done, what would you say is your most proud accomplishment? Uh, whether it's somebody you worked with or a movie you worked on, you said you did a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Out of all the cumulative stuff you've done, what are you most proud of? Well, it's, it's interesting. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of uh, a free enterprise because I got to make a movie with my childhood idol that will always hold a special place in my heart. I hope to one day be able to get it out on Blu-ray or high definition for everybody. Right. Um, but, I, you know, I think it's more of a collective thing because everything I work on, I try and make it the best it can be. Like, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I was hired by a buddy of mine to recut a movie called Arcade which was directed by Albert Pune, this really low-budget, full-moon entertainment movie about kids getting sucked inside a video game. Right. And it was, it was unwatchable. It was <laughs> right. really bad. And uh, Peter Billingsley, the kid that starred in A Christmas Story, he and I ended up recutting the whole movie from scratch. We went back in and, and really built the movie back up from, from the ground up. And it went from being totally unwatchable to being really mediocre. <laughs> and I was damn proud of that mediocrity. But I learned so much on that particular movie. I learned so much about post-production that served me almost 25 years later to this day. And um, uh, it, 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 I was really proud of, of getting involved in that project and seeing it through to its, uh, its fruition. Because it was tough. It was rough. And I was, I was learning as I went along. And um, we never gave up. And it was right. the kind of thing where... When I said to Peter, I go, you know, we should recut this movie, like, from the beginning. And he's like, we're supposed to just, just drop in new effects. I go, yeah, but this movie's terrible, and you're in it. Let's, <laughs> re let's just recut it. And it's, uh, we recut 10 minutes of it, based on our 10 minutes. The, the big boss man, Charlie Band, said, wow, you made this a lot better. Go ahead. And I sort of learned my, my, uh, the, my guiding principle in Hollywood, which was never ask for permission, beg for forgiveness. Yep, I've, I've and, run the and, same way. Because that way, if you know, if you believe in yourself and you get something done, at least it's finished and you can show people. Because when you ask people if you can do something, the answer is always no. Right. And, and, and making Hollywood is such a difficult road to travel down that it, it's, it's better when you actually made something first and then ask if you can do it. Right. So I don't recommend that with everybody. <laughs> people, but the people that know what they're doing that are convinced they know what they're doing and have the tools and have the talent why not go for it um so is there anything uh you have coming up soon that you want to let people know about like another project you have working on that maybe i know you said you were kind of editing today and stuff i don't know is there yeah i mean i, I have i have three things coming up i i have of course tango shalom the feature that i hope we can finish in the next month or two Okay. Uh, unfortunately the co-writer and one of the stars actor joseph bologna passed away this weekend so the movie is currently on hold for right. at least a couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, I'm also working on sort of a master class program for my oldest friend in the world, Mike Schertz. Mike Schertz is an ER doctor and a uh, former Green Beret. And he has created a master class like you'd see online, like Kevin Spacey yeah. does an act master right. class. It's a master class about how to, uh, it's, cr it's about crisis medicine. Uh, if you're involved in an active shooter event like or uh, any kind of a catastrophic event where people don't have direct access to medical care if they've been shot or in a building collapse, if you take this course, it will help you uh, save people's lives. It's wow. a very, very cool, cool course. And I produced and directed uh, 35 hours of the class, and I'm currently wow. editing that as well. And uh, I also have a comedy special. This is kind of crazy. Uh, I, I directed a comedy special that was hosted by Faison Love, or Faison Love, Faison Love, Faison Love, <laughs> in Belize, of all places. Uh, we shot it in Belize, and it's a stand-up comedy show where four comics uh, are taken down to Belize, and it's really funny, and in between each stand-up set they do, we follow them around with cameras into the jungle and into the ruins, <laughs> the mock ruins, and... It's really funny, and hopefully that'll that'll. Uh, it's going to be, I think, maybe on Showtime either later this year or the beginning of 2018. Okay. So it, that it's called cool. Off the Grid Comedy. So look out for that. It's really funny. Okay, perfect. And is there anything that you haven't had the chance to do, or somebody you really want to work with, or a movie you want to make that you just haven't had the chance to do yet? Like, what's one of your biggest goals you have right now? Well, I'm you know I'm working on a film uh, called Solomon's Knife that is sort of a near future science fiction themed movie about reproductive rights 
Okay. Um, it's about a doctor who sort of has a very interesting way of dealing with human embryos without destroying them. Okay. Uh, and it, it, it causes a firestorm of controversy. And it's a film I've wanted to make for a long time, so I'm hoping to get that off the ground. Um, and then I'm also uh, uh, hoping to get Free Enterprise 2 made. Oh, that'd be cool. It would be great. And we almost had it made seven years ago, but we lost our financing, unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. So do you... Um, how do you go about casting and that stuff? Is it all networking through people you know, or how do you go about starting that there, stuff? There's some of that, but I have a really good casting um, uh, casting person. Uh, her name's Christine Sheeks, and she's also a, a produces with me, and she's fantastic. And she casts movies like Boogie Nights, and she has a real love nice. of actors. So whenever I'm working on projects, I usually go through her, but then I'll augment it you know, if I know people. Like Free Enterprise was full of, of bit parts of people that I just knew. Right, okay. Met. And so we, we had so many speaking roles in the film that we gave a lot of friends parts, which was great. And they were all actors. It wasn't like I said, hey, I just want to stick you in the movie. I mean, they had <laughs> right. some kind of, of uh, They had some sort of background. Dish. Right. Um, so as far as Collider goes, uh, for those of you that don't know, he does uh, a daily show now of Collider Heroes, right? Are you, You're on the right. daily one? And um, how did you get involved with Collider and the Schmoes and all those guys and the Schmo down? Like, how, how did you go from being an editor and then those industry to working with those guys? Well, it's funny. I've known John Schnepp for years and years and years. And living in Los Angeles, it's a pretty small town. And if you work, you know, Schnepp had worked on Metalocalypse and he'd worked on a number of other shows. And I'd been bouncing around doing DVD work and producing work. And, uh, you know, I produced a horror film called The Hills Run Red that you get on dvd from warner brothers and i produced i was a producer on both agent cody banks movies so you kind of everybody kind of knows everybody and then if you're a geek the geek circles are even smaller because you see each other at screenings and at san diego comic-con and and he just asked me to be a guest panelist on heroes and after i did it a couple of times people asked for me to come back and then eventually schnepp made me a regular that's cool. And then once once I was a regular, people wanted to see me on the Schmodown. And I started doing Team Heroes, and then uh, I, I was in the Inner Geekdom Fatal Five way and won that, so I won <laughs> the first Inner Geekdom title. Now I've been sucking in the Inner Geekdom, but uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to my new team, my new team, Blofeld's Cat with Mark Draco. I think we're going to be formidable, because he and I are... We sort of see along the same lines, and I think our, our knowledge complements one another. So uh, I think that we're going to take on Team Heroes, and if we defeat Team Heroes and Hector Navarro, uh, <laughs> I won't yell. Um, but uh, team, I'm, I'm going to be fighting against Schnepp and Hector Navarro, and if we beat them, then we take on my old teammates, uh, Roca and Nost from uh, the Floor Horsemen. So hopefully we can, uh, Blofeld's cap will, will go somewhere. It's going to be tough. Oh, but, man, that's, uh, it's going to be fun. That's awesome. Well, that kind of leads me into uh, my next portion, speaking of the Schmodown and stuff. Uh, you, ex I noticed I'm part of a page called the MTS Fan Reaction League. I don't know if you noticed you were accepted an invite into that. Um, oh. But there was a guy that added you into this group. I don't even know if you looked at it or not yet. Um, I don't but know, it's, but I will. It's the Movie Trivia Schmodown Fan Reaction League. And basically what it is is... Uh, a bunch of the fans have been slowly gathering into this Facebook page, and we all react to the first round of all the Schmodown matches that appear. So, like, uh, I think whenever the next match is, within 48 hours, everyone's going to upload their reaction, and we kind of, you know, play along and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm scared after my horrible performance the last couple of Jeremy Johns and Jay Washington, man. I'll never get over those. those <laughs> were, my, my mind was clearly not <coughs> Well, the cool thing is... better next time. Well, the cool thing is, um, you know, I, I've, I've done a few now. I've only done a couple, but I've, I've realized it's a lot harder when you're actually on the time, you know, when it's timed and everything because I play along and it's – I think I know the answer and it's on the tip of my tongue and then the time runs out and I do horrible. But when I'm just watching it on my own, I feel like I know everything. So. Oh, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's – I mean, there are times lately where, you know, like, for instance, who was the giant spider in Return of the King? And I'm like, well, I know it's right. Sheila, but when you're, you're – you literally can't yeah, it's just, see it. Uh, like uh, and, from the tip of your tongue. The, wor the worst for me was, it was like, you know, who played Harvey Dent in Tim Burton's Batman? And I was, in my mind's eye, I'm like, well, Billy D. Williams. 
but I saw him like he was in my mind yes. I couldn't say his name yes exactly and I'm, I'm, I'm like <laughs> it's such, it such a weird phenomenon because if I'm just talking to somebody, I don't have that problem. Yeah, but exactly. Lately, I, I think I've been psyching myself out. You know, I've been spending too much time yelling and screaming and not enough time just focusing on the game at hand. It's just I play the game. <laughs> yeah. All you need to do. I'm definitely more of a visual person, so when I'm answering those questions I'll, like you, I'll visualize their face. And I'm like, I know who it is. Or if, if you had a list of names, I would instantly know it, but I just can't. It's on the tip of my tongue. But uh, anyways, these guys all on this page, I asked them to post some fan questions for you. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> since we did this uh, interview right off the bat, there's not a ton of them. Um, but uh, to start off, this guy, um, and hopefully if I pronounce your names wrong, I'm sorry. You know, I don't, some of them have weird names, but Dave Gugner. I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, he wants to know uh, when you're going to be playing Hector Navarro again, if ever. Well, Hector is when are you on get Team shot Heroes with John. So my my debut in Blofeld's Cat will be against John and Hector. And I'm looking forward to destroying them. Because, you know, Schnepp, because I became such a villain, the captain <laughs> is such a villain, I got kicked off my own team. I know, right? And I, I had my three, my three victories taken away from me. So I'm really looking forward to, to Blofeld's Cat making its debut against Hector Navarro and John Schnepp. And we will rain fire down from hell on them. <laughs> At least one could hope. Right, right. Um, and then Joey Morin, who is kind of the guy that started this page. Uh, you kind of already answered the first part of his question. He was wondering if you took a, a look at the league um, and to check out the page and stuff. You said you haven't yet, but maybe you will. They oh, also. I totally will. D due to the fact that uh, we're reacting to it, there's no real 100% way to know people have integrity and aren't just looking at all the answers first and then posting it like they know them, you know, because some people get a lot of perfects and it seems kind of like, I don't know, but there's no real way to know. So they started doing this trial by fire thing is what they're calling it. And basically they do a live match, they create their own questions and stuff. And I know they're hoping one day, um, they've added you and a few other people, they're hoping one day they can get you guys to compete on their I don't know if that's possible or not, or what your guys' rules are, or whatever. But oh no, I mean, I, I, I totally do that. that would be, look, and I, here's the thing: I think what Mark Ellis and, and Christian Harloff have done with the Schmodown is great, and I, I, I am so privileged to be a part of it. I think that those guys, first of all, everybody at Collider is so nice. I, I really like everyone there, and you know, Christian and, and Mark have done such a great job with the schmoes know and then turning it into the schmodown and being inclusive and creating I think creating a really there's not a lot of, of, of positive uh, fan circles have become so we're we so bitchy when we're talking about what we <laughs> like and everybody's yeah. always backbiting and uh, this sucks and that sucks and you <laughs> suck you know everyone sucks but I think what's great about the schmodown is it's so much fun right you know and, and everybody look I, I can hate my former teammates uh, in the Schmodown as right. the character of the captain, but you can't hate John Roca. Right. I mean, Roca's one of the nicest guys you'll ever hope to meet. I mean, he's always got a smile on his face. He's always so fun to hang around and, and, and knows to. And I just, there's nobody you don't like. So right. it's been a privilege to be a part of it. And, you know, a lot of other people have talked about how, well, it's rigged. It isn't rigged. Man, that you are at the mercy of of the wheel. Like if somebody gets uh, opponent's choice, I mean, and somebody gives me something like that's what happened. I think with Jeremy Johns when you know he said Lord of the Rings, which I should have known or something, but it was right. just not good. It, it, you never know. I mean, you could be up by twenty to six, and someone gets a good spin, and you're neck and neck, and those that final round, man, the three and the five pointer is the game. Yeah, absolutely. And you never know. You never know. Yeah, I think I think I think people forget that you know the like you said being a villain and stuff. That part is kind of staged. It's like the WWF or whatever. But yeah, answering the questions is pretty legit as far as I know. Oh, so, totally. and I have to say, you know, even though we have like these sort of storylines, kind of uh, nothing is scripted. Oh no, you know, 
No, it's, okay. it's not scripted. <laughs> I didn't know all. that. I, I thought like, that was stuff was scripted. No, it, it's like I know, like I think in real life, as much as I like Jay Washington, he is a big mouth. <laughs> right. You know, so Tino and, and Jay Washington and I, like, we're thrown in a room together. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Right. Like, I don't know what they're gonna say. And, okay. And it's 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 really funny. Like we, you just kind of go with it. And and what's interesting about that is. It's almost like an improv exercise. Like, sure, I am the captain, and the captain is me. But I don't hate Hector Navarro, right? Uh, you know, in, in real life. But my character uh, wants to crush Hector Navarro like the little pebble he is. He needs <laughs> to be ground into dust and never to be seen again. Frankly, right? <laughs> now, it's okay for me to be both the both of these kinds of people, um, and, and uh, so. It's more fun like when I'm – like after a match when you're being interviewed, if Emma Fife's interviewing me or, or Grace is interviewing me or whomever's interviewing me, I don't know what I'm going to say. Like there's no cue cards or anything. I mean I, I – and there's, a, there's pressure because there's a lot of really funny – I mean Ellis is a great stand-up comedian. I mean you listen to some of the things, him and Harloff, the banter. Uh, <laughs> It's it's you have you have a lot to live up to and it's all right. extemporaneous and you want to be funny. And right. if you're not funny, it's like, oh, that wasn't funny. <laughs> you know, then, then you feel like, ah, that wasn't funny. Luckily, they edit. They do right. edit the shows and stuff. Thank God. So <laughs> I can look more entertaining than I really am. <laughs> but, but that's why it's so much fun. I mean, you really don't know what, what's going to happen. And I don't know what Christian Harloff, what he's going to come up with, like what he wants, what he wants to do. or And also, uh, scheduling these matches is tough because everybody works. You right, know, Everybody's yeah. got jobs, and it's, it's really hard. You, like, never know, like... I've sometimes got calls a day in advance. Hey, can you come in and do this match today? And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll <laughs> try and make it work. And sometimes I even forget. Like I don't look, I don't keep that close to track just because I'm busy. I, I don't know who we're playing sometimes. Right, you show you know, up and hope for the best. I, yes, yes, and clearly I haven't done enough preparation in my last three inner geekdom matches. <laughs> so. Okay, but I, it's it's a lot of fun, and it's just as much fun as they make it look, if if not more so. Well, hopefully, then I know Jay Washington is on this fan page as well, and they've slowly been adding more people. Hopefully, eventually, I mean, it'd be kind of cool if uh, you know they kind of a good way for you guys to interact with fans is doing trivia matches against all of us, and we can really test who's who's good and who's oh, not. Yeah. You know, and there that'd be kind of cool, so, depending on your no, guys' totally, schedules. But totally, I'd love to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but moving on, uh, the next guy, again, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, name wrong. Uh, Che Silver Fox Watson wants to know what your favorite hot toy ever is. Because we know you Ooh, that's a good. Now, see, here's the thing. It's a really good question because my favorite hot toy ever, I think, is the fact, is Vito Corleone, Marlon Brando from The Godfather. But it's not because I think it's the best hot toy. I just can't believe they made one. Uh, so that's probably my very favorite hot toy but I love a lot of the die cast Iron Man armors like the the armor from Age of Ultron the die cast armor right. the engineering on those figures is is incredible it's crazy I mean it's just amazing what they can do and there's god there's so many I love the Christopher Reeves Superman and then I also love the Marlon Brando they put out that didn't come out Domestically, it only came out overseas for Superman Returns, but I have to put my Christopher Lee and my Marlon Brando Jarrell together if they're always displayed together. And uh, you know, I really like Rocket and Groot. Okay, that was a that was a hard toy to do. Um, and God, there's just there's so many. So I, that's I, a I, lot. I, I but if you had to if that. you had to pick one, which one's your favorite? I, it would have to be the Vito Corleone. Just because okay. the Vito Corleone transcends being an action figure, and The Godfather is one of my favorite movies of all time. So when I sat, I sit looking at him, he's a reminder of, of you got to do your best work. What you right. aspire to is making The Godfather, whether you're doing a documentary about when I worked on Inspector Gadget 2, <laughs> or whether I'm working on Lord of the Rings, or whether I'm making a feature film, you're always aspiring to the heights of The Godfather, no matter what it is that you do. Right. Okay. No matter what work you're working on, it's never beneath you, and you should always try and do your best work. And and my Vito Corleone hot toy reminds me of that. Okay, cool. Some good advice for all of you. Uh, Matt Reinstedel says, uh, "Where did you get your black and uh, gold coat?" That I bought that black and gold coat like. 
15 years ago at a store called Shrine on Melrose here in LA. I don't know if Shrine's still around. I guess you can look on the internet. And it was like a goth store. Okay. And I bought it for Halloween one year because I had a, a makeup effects friend of mine did a whole demon head prosthesis. My entire head was, was done up as a demon. It was awesome. And that was my, he was like a, a renaissance demon. Okay. So I had I had this coat and I wore it one other time to a party at Mike Doherty's house. Mike Doherty, who directed Trick or Treat, and who's now directing the um, new Godzilla movie. Right. I wore it to his house and I was a vampire, where I had a really long head of white hair. I had fangs made that fit my teeth. I had them specially made for me, and so I was a, I was a vampire. And that was the only other time I wore this jacket. The jacket was like five hundred bucks, and I wore it twice. <laughs> But it was such a great jacket, so heavy and thick that I, I, I couldn't get rid of it. When I started, well, I think I wore it my, to my second Schmodown match. It felt like Harloff's like, you know, you should be a heel. And I'm like, yeah, man, a heel. That sounds fun. I'll do that. And I'm like, if I'm going to be a heel, if I'm going to be a bad guy, I've got to be a real, like, I've got to look like a douche. i got to come out, <laughs> like, like, really play the heel role. Because if you're not going to do that, why... So I'm like, all right, oh, I've got this jacket. So I just put the jacket on, and people love it. I've actually got um, a frilly, like, poet's shirt that went with the jacket, like this Renaissance. And I have, like, velvet black pants that right. go with it, too. But they're just so hot and heavy that it would be difficult to wear in the studio. I, right. I sweat enough as it is. <laughs> right. But um, one day I've got to go I've got to go full-on regalia and maybe put on the long white wig and the, and the pirate hat. That'd be pretty maybe, epic. Yeah, it would be epic. <laughs> maybe um, if I maybe if I win the match against Team Heroes and have to take on Roka as the outlaw, I've got to do something. You know, his V for Vendetta mask, something to, to trounce that. Oh yeah, definitely. See, of course, I have to beat Navarro and Schnepp first. Just take that mask and stomp on it or something. But yeah. Um, so Matt Reinstedel also asks, and you kind of uh, mentioned that you maybe you haven't been studying enough, but. For the team tournament, how do you train? Do you rewatch certain genres of movies, read books, scroll on IMDb? Like, what's your study pattern? Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I like I had never seen all the Harry Potter movies, and I tend to re- retain a lot. But I've watched so many movies in my life. Another disadvantage I have is that I'm older. I'm like a fucking old man, and and I've seen a lot more movies in my life. Right. So I I just have this wealth of knowledge simply for being as old as I am. And it's tough. Like for the inner geekdom, I should study up more, especially like I hated suicide squad. I saw suicide squad once and I lose a question about the pink unicorn. Well, I wouldn't know that. I hated that movie. (laughs) I I, I, I buy so many Blu-rays. I did not buy suicide squad on Blu-ray, which I need to watch now. And I need to brush up on Harry Potter. But you know, it was funny, like some Harry Potter stuff, like I got a, uh, uh, a, um, a Kenneth Branagh question, right, a couple of Schmodowns ago, because I had watched that Harry Potter film. Right. And, you know, I do go back and flip through the IMDb, or I do look at the inner geekdom uh, films just to refresh myself. But there's, you don't know what anyone's going to ask. You don't know what the questions are going to be, so it's hard to study. Yeah. You either know it or you don't. Like, it's either in your blood. Like, I would not want to go up against Rachel, Rachel Cushing when it comes to Lord of the Rings or even something like Game of Thrones, any fan- fantasy is her category, whether right. it's Potter or, or Lord of the Rings, I wouldn't want to go up against her. Although, against Jay Washington, I did get that Hobbit question right, that there were 13, including um, Thorin, how many Hobbits were there? And there's, I mean, pardon me, how many dwarves were there in The Hobbit? And that it was 13, and then Bilbo. Yeah, see, I put 12 on that one, and I was one of the ones I was like, dang it. Well, if you didn't, they said including Thorin, so I was like, okay, if it's Thorin Oakenshield as well, then it's then it's thirteen. Right, right. Um, yeah, I found I was going to try to study when I started doing these fan reactions, and I can't. Yeah, you're right. It's, you can either kind of know it or you don't. The things that I need to study on are like I'm horrible with directors, and then anything with like scores and soundtracks. Beyond that, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, where I don't have any specialty, but I kind of have a general knowledge of stuff after the '90s. But before that, I don't know. So, yeah, I know. Kind of... directors and score, I'm usually pretty good with. Sometimes I'm not. I mean, I didn't know James Horner. I totally that totally slipped my mind. But yeah, it's like I'm really excited about the James Bond category because I've been watching James Bond movies since I was a little kid. I don't understand like like you know the whole inner geekdom thing. I 
don't understand why Harry Potter would be considered geeky. The books were wildly successful. The movies were billion. It's a billion dollar friend. The movies were wildly successful. No one's a geek for liking Harry Potter, but yet it's yeah. part of the inner geek. Well, category. you could say the same thing about Lord of the Rings and stuff. You know, cause... it's true. No, it's true. But Lord of the Rings, growing up, was kind of geeky. True. It wasn't until the movies came out that it became sort of ubiquitous and everyone loved them. Right. And I love those movies. I love. I, those d- movies. I don't know about James Bond being one of the categories in the inner geekdom, but I like the category. But I don't know if it fits in there. But whatever. It is what yeah, it I mean, is. I, I do only because I know the category. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. Like I saw Schmodown when somebody didn't know what it what did Q stand for. The question was, uh, you know, major major Boothroyd and, and Q. What is yeah, that Q was the recent for? one. Of course, yeah, of course it was quartermaster. Right. How, doesn't everyone know that? Well, apparently so, not. <laughs> not so, me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. So next, Hunter Raid Cham- Chambles. Uh, you already pretty much uh, answered this question, but I'm going to put it out there So, because he asked it. Uh, he said, ask him how he feels about being a part of the Shmoda and, and the fan base. You pretty much already answered that, though, talking about how good it all is. And we kind of talked about you possibly playing on the MTS uh, league and stuff. But um, Oh, yeah. I mean, I have to tell you, the, the, the great thing about the Shmoda is, is even though people can hate me, uh, which is fine. They should. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's still... I wouldn't be a good heel if everybody liked me. I don't want to be a lovable heel. That's so fun. Right. Although you want to be, want to be a lightning rod of, of controversy and hate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever find though it gets a little too extreme? Like uh, I know sometimes it's fun to be like. You know, to hate you and stuff. But do you ever get truly like mean stuff that you're like, okay, that's a little too far? No, you know when people have, when people call me an old man or they're you know they're like lose some weight or something like that. I'm like, hey man, you can't. The truth <laughs> is truth. So you can't. I, I mean, ultimately, no matter how insulting people would ever get about me, I'm on something called the schmo down. How bad can it really get? Right. You know, don't schmo is like a word I grew up with, and and uh, it, it, to me, every time I hear the word schmo down, it puts a smile on my face. So I can't, you know, I can't take it that personally. The 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 people that hate the Star Trek fan film I was involved with are far more. Uh, uh, mean about their assessment of me as a person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no, I, I mean I think part of the fun is trash talk. I mean one of the right. great things about the showdown is you got to be you got to be a great uh, smack talker, and if you can't smack talk and you can't accept smack talk, you shouldn't be doing it. Right. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> So next, uh, this isn't a fan question, more of my question. Is there anything, and you can yell if you want to or whatever, is there anything you want to say to your, your upcoming competitors or any future matches? Is there anything you just want to put out them for them to hear? Yeah! Let me talk about Team Heroes for a minute. Snap fired me, told me I was a villain, took away three victories from me. And he teamed up with who? Who? Hector Navarro! <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. You're going down! Both of you! <laughs> yes. So that's, yes, that's what I have to say. <laughs> All right. And then uh, lastly, Russell Howell asked, uh, tell him we're, well, I guess it's not really a question more of a statement. He said, tell him we're huge fans and thank you for being uh, receptive of my random invite to this league page. And yeah, overall, just, uh, Thank you for all the stuff you do and all the movies and content you put out there and write and direct and produce and being part of Collider and Collider Heroes and so much entertainment for all of us and being the heel and all that jazz and doing this interview. It's really awesome um, to show your support oh, of fans it. as well. So that's cool. It's, it's my pleasure. I, I, I Thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, I guess a good way to segue into the ending. My YouTube channel is KM Reviews. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Nittleman. And uh, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. Find me on Instagram at RM Burnett. Or find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. But as I've always said to people lately, I get so many of these friend requests and you don't know. They're all Russian hot bots to me. They give you this <laughs> pretty girl as you're supposed to friend and they've got like one post. I'm like, come right. on, man. You're a bot from the Soviet Union. Don't try and pull one over on me. Right. Part of the former Soviet Union. So just send me a message telling me you're for real. Or tell me what your favorite hot toy is. 
or tell me something. There you go. All right, guys. Uh, so stay tuned for more content coming up, and uh, yeah, we'll stay tuned for more video reviews if you can handle it. Go.